Today I'm going to tread lightly, but I'm pretty sure, in fact I'm positive, this video blog is going to be a bit controversial. But I had someone ask me, in fact I had a few people ask me, what do you do in this situation? And I felt like, you know what, I want to really put this out there to give you some boundaries and help you with some perspective outside of just your own situation. Let me say that a lot of what we do in our video blogs, our articles, and, and whatnot is to kind of help normalize your situation. It's to help you not feel like you're the only one. People love to come to the EMS weekend because they say, you know what? <laughs> I felt like I was the only one and then I came here with these other couples and I realized I'm not the only one. I'm not the worst. I'm not without hope. There's other people just like me who are in trauma and now I feel like I have a sense of community that aren't just sitting around commiserating, but are moving towards a purpose of healing and, and at least personal restoration, maybe even marital restoration. The controversial but necessary discussion today is the discussion of the situation where the betrayed spouse is wanting details and asking questions, but the unfaithful spouse continues to respond with, I can't remember, I don't remember, I don't know, I'm not sure, answers like that. Now, for the betrayed spouse, those answers are excruciating. It speaks to, and this is a good reminder for you, the unfaithful, but it speaks to the betrayed that you're continuing to hide something or that you don't want to give up the details because you know if you give up the details they're going to be angry or they're going to be go nuts or they're going to leave you or, or all of those things. But the betrayed has this sneaky suspicion. Some of it's validated, some of it's maybe not validated, but they have this continual frustration that they want to get to the bottom of it and it's usually a frustration that is actually well grounded in the fact that you have maybe said that all the details are out but then have to come back with more details and and then there's like two or three or four different D days or, or disclosure days and the betrayed spouse never feels like everything is out in the open. It's incredibly frustrating for the betrayed. Short of the affair partner being a female and getting pregnant and short of the unfaithful spouse going back and forth back and forth with the affair partner I don't know that there's a more painful situation than when the unfaithful says, all right, everything's out, you know everything, and then another week or two or month or six months later says, well, wait a minute, there's more, or, well, yeah, there is more. Um, that's incredibly wounding, but it's not what I want to hone in on today. What I want to hone in on is the gap, the, the, the chasm where the unfaithful legitimately says, I don't know, I can't remember, I don't remember, I'm not sure, but yet the betrayed is stuck on the fact that, you know what, no, you're lying, you're deceiving, you're doing this all over again, and there becomes this stalemate of a situation. I want to start by saying and validate the fact that there are times, and there were times for me, where Samantha would ask me a series of questions and I literally could not remember. Now, it may have been about certain details, it may have been places, it may have been things that I had said, but I really did my best to give up all the information, but there were a few times where I just could not remember, and what I had to do was say, you know what, I don't remember. And I'm, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to try and find those memories, or remember what I said or did or what have you, but I have to tell you genuinely, I just don't know. It is true that there are times where the unfaithful may not remember everything that they said or did, but they have to make a commitment to the betrayed to say, as we go about in this recovery process, I make a commitment to you though, if I come to remember things, I commit to bring them to you in a way that maybe the betrayed kind of shares. The betrayed may say, look, if you come up with new information or if you remember something, I want you to write it down in a journal and I want you to share it with me. Or they may say, I want you to come to me in a, play, in a time very soon, within 24 hours of remembering this information, unless it's during, you know, 
a child's wedding or a birthday party or something like that, but I want you to come to me and say, look, I've remembered some new information and I want to tell you this. There's going to be times in some situations where the unfaithful remembers information and they have to come clean. Now, that is far different than an unfaithful that says, well, you know, there wasn't just two affair partners, there was, you know, four or five or what have you. Um, it's, it's tough to block out actual affairs and to use that as a justification to lie or drip feed or trickle truth is really, unfortunately, unexcusable. Now, I want to offer a counterpoint. There is a point where the betrayed begins to create almost an idolatry or worship of details, and it becomes this excessive nightmare situation where you're constantly wanting even the minutia of details to the point where real life is put on hold because there is an addiction to the details. Not a true addiction, but there is this point where it's like you have to come to the point where you say, okay, I know enough to heal. Constantly finding out more and more details are only creating reminders, they're only creating blockages, and there is a point where you do have to say, okay, I know enough, we're going to heal from here. All the while being open to the fact that there may be some new information that he or she remembers and has to share with you, and if it's something ridiculous, like I've already alluded to, well then that kind of, that says, hold on. We're going to have to have another discussion here. So there is a point where if the unfaithful continues to have these multiple D-days, there is a point where common sense says, okay, you're purposely deceiving me, and I can't continue to live like this. I think, though, one of the things that you have to really look out for is if you're a betrayed, and you're kind of having this almost idolatry or, or real need for excessive details, and you're Here's what the biggest thing I want to tell you is that's dysfunctional and destructive is that you're wounding your unfaithful spouse because you are trying to be a detective and get more and more details. And it usually happens a lot with a betrayed male spouse and an unfaithful female spouse. If you're just bullying her and damaging her and attacking him or her for details, you have to ask yourself, I've done this for X amount of time and I'm not getting any new information, but yet I'm still holding on to the fact that I think there's new information, but yet I'm damaging my spouse, I'm wounding him or her, and I'm creating a significant roadblock. There's a point where you have to say, okay, look, we need to do a lie detector, or I need to say I, I know enough. And maybe you say, I know enough, but if there's new information that's borderline ridiculous that comes out, we're done, we're separating. We're contacting attorneys. I'm not going to live this way. But you can't. If you do, I promise you, I've seen the outcome, and the outcome is never good. And most of the time, it, it leads to a separation, if not a divorce. If you, a betrayed, are constantly hammering and abusing your unfaithful spouse for details because you have a suspicion that there is more, I think you have to ask yourself, wait a minute, is this really helpful. I want to land the plane of this discussion and tell you now, there's always exceptions. And if you are sitting here going, well, wait a minute, Samuel, I've had five D-days and every day there's, every D-day there's a disclosure of a new affair or this or that. Well, I am with you. It's ridiculous. There's something wrong. If you also are kind of like, Samuel, you're telling me that I should, you know, be happy with knowing enough, but yet Every time he or she gives me new information, it is this enormous, you know, nuclear bomb of new information. Well, then I again am with you. There's a point where you go, look, I, I'm not going to keep doing this. I'm not going to live like this. Maybe it's a lie detector. And if, if that even still is a fiasco or if they refuse to take a lie detector, well, there's your answer. I'm sorry. That's a big concern that I think you probably have to start to retreat a little bit and not keep coming back to the abusive, dysfunctional situation. Finally, a word to the unfaithful. Listen, drip feeding, trickle truth, whatever you want to call it, is just never going to help you. I know you're terrified. I know you think, man, if, if he or she knows this, it's over. It may be, but maybe not. Maybe you have made an idol, or you've been so enormously absorbed by this information 
But if you'll just get the information out, the betrayed can process it, heal from it, y'all can get some help, and you can move on down the road, and you'll be a new man or a new woman because you finally got that bomb out. But if you keep bombing your spouse, don't be surprised if one day they wake up and go, I'm not going to be bombed anymore. I'm done. 